Hey, welcome to Think Creative TV. Thanks for joining us and looking forward to sharing another quick tip. If you'd love to tap the subscribe button, that would really help and you'll get all of the latest videos pushed straight out to you as they're created. So let's jump in to our new tip of the day. Hey, so welcome to this video. Um, I've been looking around for something that can solve the problem of recreating breakout rooms um, within a product that maybe you know schools can't afford to pay for additional products at this time but they might have access to something that works really well for them uh, i'm going to take a look at how you can utilize teams to create the same effect as you might have seen in other products like zoom and like webex which work brilliantly well but you do have to pay for those and this is something that schools can do where they don't need to pay for it so i'm going to go ahead and go into teams and I've done a bit of preparation work here already. I've created a class. This is uh, my class down the bottom here. And I've got a general page where, you know, I might be using this to interact with my students and share work, etc. all of those other things. And then what I've done is started to think about, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to want a breakout room here. So I've created a separate group for my students to be able to access. And then within that, this is a link to a Microsoft Teams meeting space where those students and those students alone can have a separate session to what I might have in the main area. And I'm going to go through the whole how to do this, but just wanted to show you this is what I'm trying to create. So let's imagine in my general space here, I need to invite the, the students in my class, or you might have a system where this is automatically done for you, which, which was uh, really simple. If you haven't, I've just quickly gone to manage members and I've added some people into this. I've just used uh, dummy accounts that I've got here um, just to, to show off how this works as opposed to exposing uh, my students' accounts on this video. So this is my general space. This is a place where I could have that initial meeting. So let's go ahead and look at what that would look like. If I tap on the meetings tab along the bottom, I can create a meeting direct in Teams. And I'm just going to put this class discussion or whatever you might want to call it. And I'm going to change that to an all day event and tap save. What that's then going to do is create a link for me that I can use. There are additional options that you can go through in terms of, you know, do you want the students to be able to present from their device who can get in without going into the lobby, etc. So there are things that you can change in here. I'm just going to open this up to everybody at this point and click save. And then when I go back, all I want to do is copy this meeting link. So I just choose that and copy it. I'm going to jump back to my Teams, make sure that I'm in general. So I want to be in this section. And if I tap on new post, paste that meeting link in here. And this is now a meeting which is going to take me directly into Teams. And I might put some extra information above that by saying click the link below to join the class discussion, the class live feed, whatever it might be. So let's imagine we're in this video feed now. The whole of the class is in there. There might be you know 30 to, to 100 people, depending on how many people you have in your class. And everyone's listening to the input that you're giving. Maybe you're sharing your screen and you're, you're giving them some overviews of what you want to, to talk about. And then you get to the point in your session when you want them to break out into smaller groups. Now, having one video feed means it's just going to be chaos if everyone turns on their microphone. So let's have a look at how we can create these separate feeds. What I've done here is exactly the same process, but I've created a group with a separate link, which only the people in that group will be able to access. So it works in exactly the same way. Here's that everybody has access. Here's the group access for just the people in that group. And how I set that up is actually pretty easy. Um, again, you can do this on other platforms and it will do it automatically for you, but you are paying for that service. So what we're gonna look at is how can we do this for free? And again, once you've got this set up once, you, you potentially never need to worry about doing this again. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my class, tap on three dots, and go to manage channels. I've already set up group A, so I'm gonna to go to plus, and I'm just gonna call this group B. And I'm gonna make sure, and this is the important bit, I make this private, because I wanna make sure that only the students that should be in that group get access to that group, um, because otherwise you might get students going into all sorts of different groups, and that's not what we want, so we wanna make it as simple as possible. I'm going to tap done. Well, that's going to create that group for me. And then I can choose who I want to put in that group. Um, I've just got some examples here. So I'm just going to choose the people that, that I've um, kind of already added to my group. But again, you would have your class lists, etc. and access to those people. You choose who you want to have in each group. And once you're done, you simply tap done. So that's created this new group for me. You'll see that if I expand that class, I now have group A and group B. And you can repeat that process as many times as you want. 
And the process to create their meeting space is exactly the same. So if I tap on group B, I want to add in that link in this space that only those students have access to. So I'll go back to meetings, I tap on create meeting, tap on breakout space, or choose, sorry, breakout space as an option. Again, I'm gonna change this to all day, tap save. I wanna copy that link again, and obviously, again, as we said before, we can change those options. So if I tap on uh, copy the link, Every time you make a Teams kind of space like this, a Teams meeting, it's going to give you that link and that's going to be a bespoke link. So I don't want to copy the one from before because it means everyone would be in the same meeting. Go to new post, tap on paste and enter that. So this is a different space just for the students that I've added into group B. Group A have their own space and then there's a general space. Now, as the creator of this, I actually can jump from space to space. So following this session, I can sort of say, I'm gonna go and drop in and see what's happening in group A. Click on the link, goes to the video, see what they're talking about. And then I can drop out of that one and jump into group B. From the student's point of view, they will only see the groups that they have access to. So there will be no need for them to, to accidentally jump into a wrong group because they won't see them because they weren't invited to it. So there we go. It's pretty simple to set up. It does take a little bit of forethought in terms of making these, but once they're set up, they are my breakout spaces that I can use at any point. And if I ever wanna change any of those spaces, I can simply go to the information about the space, manage that channel, take some students out, add different students in, um, and just really start to rearrange those things. So quite simple in how I might want to change those uh, approaches in my Teams breakout spaces. Thanks a lot for listening. If you've got any questions about this, please drop them in the comments below and check out some of the other videos if there's anything that's going to upskill your teaching.